Hey guys, it's Steve here with TelescopeTuners.com. Today we'll be going through PixInsight and using mosaics by coordinates to create, obviously, mosaics. And uh, we'll be working on the image that's up on the screen here right now, which is the Heart Nebula. This is actually a six panel mosaic that you're looking at right now, uh, shot with an eight inch reflector. And uh, yeah, I used uh, PixInsight to piece this together, but it wasn't your what I had seen in the past, your typical way of building a mosaic. Uh, this is built with mosaic by coordinates, and we'll be looking at how to build this very mosaic. Um, zooming in here, looking around, you can see, like I say, this is six images stitched together here. You cannot see where the stitch has happened. It is an absolutely flawless method for stitching things together. So we'll be uh, we'll be looking at this and uh, yeah, let's get started. First thing we have to do is open up plate solver. Uh, so I'm going to go to script, image analysis, and plate solver. Now in here we're going to add files and we have to go to, I'm going to go to my uh, Heart Nebula Mosaic here. And here is all the images. I have HA and O3 files. So I'm going to open up all of them and open them up into this, uh, into this dialog box. Next, we're going to have to search for what we're working on. This will be the heart nebula and it'll search found the heart nebula okay this will give us the rough um, coordinates of of the center of the heart nebula uh, you next thing you want to do is enter in the uh, the date of when this was shot in this case it was 2020 uh, 1204 is when this was shot the focal length of my scope, I've determined this in the past, is 860 millimeters, roughly. And that will give us a starting point. At this point, um, you just hit OK and let it start working. Now, I already noticed that we have an error message showing up here. What will happen as it goes through this, you will get some errors. And what, especially when you have a larger mosaic, because uh, as you'll find out, this is not a blind plate solving uh, system. You have to be fairly close to the actual position of each panel in order to get the uh, to get the data for it. So we'll let it run through, and I'll show you what we're talking about. All right. So that finished off. As I said, we did get some errors. We have uh, the O3, number one, uh, HA, number three, O3, number three, and O3, number six did not plate solve. So I'm just going to make a note of that um, just so I have it marked down for myself over here. So those are the files that were not plate solved. So we'll go back, open up our script again, image analysis. All right, so those are the remaining files. But we could run it again. It's still not going to plate solve because these are the coordinates we gave it and it didn't work. Now, what I tend to do, I'll go into uh, Google Chrome here. This is Telescopius. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's a fantastic site. You can set up your account and um, within your account, it will store your equipment, uh, you can store different objects, create shooting lists. It's a fantastic uh, website that you can go to and uh, plan out your night shooting. In this case, I'm going to use it to, uh, to plan out the uh, mosaic. Right now, this is the field of view with the ASI 1600 on my 8-inch uh, reflector. What I want to do, though, is I want to have a mosaic. So I'm going to go right here to the mosaic settings. I want to have this to be two 
by three. And you see that's exactly the mosaic that I have. Clicking on here, you can see exactly this is the center of your object. This is what we had in as our coordinates earlier. And you have each panel has its own coordinates. Now, in this case, I'm going to have panel 1 is one of the coordinates. So, panel 1, uh, right up here. I did notice in my shooting plan, it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just be aware of how you're, you're shooting your object so that you know which panel you're aiming for. But we'll go with number 1. And I need that to be 2 hours, 36 minutes, and 31 seconds. So we'll go 2 hours, 36, and 31. And we'll come back into here. And it's 61, 59, 38. 61, 59, 38. And we'll go with this again. Knowing that more than likely the other uh, images that we have will not be plate solved but we'll have it go through and uh, take a look at this basically what you do go through it uh, plate solve it um, it'll write that information to the file so we'll let this run through uh, I may have to do this two or three times till I get all the images but uh, we'll get back once we have everything done <clears throat> All right, we'll just open up these files, and you can see we've now got everything has been plate solved. You get the WCS um, ending on your file, but we now have the coordinates for each one of these files uh, as it's been uh, plate solved by Pixinsight. So the next step is to go mosaic by coordinates. In this one, this is under utilities. And down to mosaic by coordinates. Click on that. I'll clear the list from the last one that I did. And I'm going to add, in this case, I'm just going to do the HA because we're going to do this in separate color channels. Um, so we're going to go HA, 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 and HA. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. We got all six. All right. So at this point, you want to calculate your um, the size and the center of your image as it goes through the files that you've entered, and it'll calculate the the actual size of the finished mosaic output down at the bottom, as well as the center coordinates. From here, you want your output images. I want them to go into my folder here. We'll place them right in here. And it's going to end with the suffix of registered. Now, this will register all the images and create an image the size of your total mosaic with each image pane registered within that space and uh, we'll just hit OK and yes we want to continue and uh, I will be back when the computer is done working on this all right so we are done with both of those you can now see we have the HA registered as well as the O3 registered so all our files are now registered to create the mosaic. Uh, I'm just going to open up. Uh, we'll go with this one here. Open it up to see, so you can see what it is. And I'm just going to stretch that. And you can see how this single pane has been registered in the whole space of the mosaic. Um, this will all fit together when everything is said and done. The last thing we need to do is go to Gradient Merge Mosaic. Now, this, um, for the most part, you can go with default settings. What I did change is the type of combination, switch that to overlay, shrink radius, 
change that to about 8 and the feather radius to 80. That gives you the uh, the radius or the feather at the edge of the image. So if you if you don't do that, you run into getting pinch stars, uh, and there's there's all sorts of little issues, and it it really doesn't look that great. So go to a nice large radius on that. Um, from here, we will go again. Um, I'm doing just the HA registered files right now. And I'm going to select those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. We got our six files. And at this point, all I'm going to do is hit the uh, global apply and sit back and let the computer build our, uh, our mosaic. All right, so we got the image done. Uh, we are going to stretch this image. And there you go. You have got a flawlessly stitched mosaic. Uh, you can see the six images where they meet in around here, looking at the, at the very edge. But when you zoom in on this, it's, a, it's an absolutely perfect stitch on an image like this. Now, you can take this out as big or as small as you want. Um, this works for for two images. It works for 20 images. Um, now, I haven't done a 20 image stitch as of yet. But it does work for any size image that you want. Now, the next step would be to take your O3 data and do the same thing with the O3 data. Stitch it together and um, then layer the two images on top of each other and just work like you would any normal file from there. Um, if you had RGB, you could do you could do it different ways. You could either do each pane as RGB and then stitch them together, or you could do each channel individually and then stitch all of those together from there. Uh, the same thing applies to uh, DSLR photography. You could use the same sort of system and uh, you would just have color images and stitch them all together to do this. Again, I hope this is, uh, is helpful. I have worked with the other system using star alignment and stitching them together that way. And to say it was a pain is an understatement. There was always stars that showed pinching, uh, lots of issues with that. Doing this way, uh, I have not seen any pinching of stars and absolutely flawless mosaics. Um, like I say, I hope this helps for you guys. And um, have any questions, hit me up. I'll be glad to help you as best I can. And um, happy shooting, clear skies.